All right, everybody, welcome back. So this is going to be another installment of Building Craftsman Kits. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to work with stains, and we're going to stain the walls and the trim for this kit. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, everybody, so let's talk about safety. So when we're working with stains, um, a lot of the times you got to read the bottles because when you look at the stains, whether you're making your homemade stain or you're making or you're buying something on the commercial market, read the label. Both of these are flammable. All right. So you have to be careful. Obviously, we don't want to be doing this near an open flame. So be careful with this. If we're using um, oil stains or oil washes, again, here's my oil wash. This is mineral spirits. It is flammable. So be careful when you're working with stains. The other thing you have to be careful of is when you're applying the stains, if it splashes, if you can go into your eyes. So make sure you wear some type of eye protection. All right. So either way, make sure that you're safe when you're working with stains. And uh, at the next thing what we're going to talk about is the tools that we need uh, to actually perform this step of the build process. So we'll be right back. All right, so now it's time to show the tools that we need to perform this step. So obviously we're gonna need our stains. So for this purpose, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using a stain called Driftwood from uh, Hunter Lion Products. These are great stains to work with, and this is my go-to color when I'm starting a build, all right? The next thing we're gonna need, if you're making your homemade uh, versions of a stain, alcohol India ink, that's fine. This is what I started off with. I got away from this for a while and then I'm back to using it. So I mix and match. I like using this now uh, on many of my models. So let's go over the different mixtures you, we can do. So this one here is, I put a little D on the back. This is the darker version. So what you need is a pint of rubbing alcohol. For the, we'll start with the light version. A light version, the, the mixing formula is one pint, uh, 91% uh, rubbing alcohol to one teaspoon of alcohol India ink. I'm sorry, one teaspoon of India ink. Now for the medium, you're gonna use two teaspoons of India ink. And then for the dark, you're gonna use three teaspoons of India ink. So th those are your formulas, uh, how to mix your own. So you can get the India ink at Michael's and it comes in a, uh, a smaller, like a one ounce bottle, but one, one bottle will last you quite a while. All right, the next thing we're gonna need is a brush. Now, this brush here was dedicated to staining only, and that's all it does, it stays with my stains. So anytime I need to uh, stain something or use a, a wash or something on any type of uh, Craftsman parts, uh, I'm using uh, this brush and I believe I have another one around here as well. Now, if you're using an oil like this, an oil wash, I'm using uh, burnt umber, oil-based uh, oil paints, and mineral spirits. You're gonna want a separate brush for that. So, look at this right here. This is the brush that I use for mineral spirits. All right, so I got one for the alcohol version and then one for the uh, the actual mineral, mineral spirit version or the oil version if you want. The next thing you're gonna need is your weights. All right, you may have to weigh your parts down afterwards so they don't warp. Anytime you add any type of moisture to the wood, it will move on you even if it's braced. So again, I use different types of weights, the one, two, three blocks and this, this nice block here that I, or this weight here. So it doubles as actually as a weight and also for when I'm squaring up buildings when I'm building them, so. And also you're gonna need your pieces that you're gonna be staining. Now, not only are you gonna need your walls, but you're gonna need your trim pieces as well. Obviously we don't stain the, uh, the bracing, but for this structure, I have the uh, corner trim, the 1 square corner trim. And I also have the two by six trim, all right? Now, obviously this model didn't come with it, but what I suggest you do, if you're going to be doing a lot of these builds or getting into Craftsman kits, it's always good to have extra wood on hand. So I buy mine. I'll show you how I buy it. I buy mine from Northeast Scale Lumber. And I buy, uh, what is this? I think there's like 24 pieces in this bundle. 
and I buy it by the bundle. So this one here is a two by 10. So if I'm building some type of loading dock or wooden, some type of wooden loading dock or a platform, I may use this. And then I also buy the, I buy the two by sixes as well from them. So I'm eventually gonna be making a nice tool um, that you can put all your striplet in. Now, my local hardware store actually sells the 16th square basswood, and they also sell the bracing. So it's easier just for me to buy it through a local uh, local vendor, and then I buy the other wood through north Northeast. So um, that's pretty much it for tools. Oh, you're going to need a paper towel, or you're going to need a, a nice size piece to lay your parts on, and then you're going to need a separate piece for blotting purposes, and, I'm gonna, and I'll show you what that is all about in just a second. So let's let's get into let's pause the video. I want to talk about why we actually stain the walls. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, now we're going to talk about why we stain our parts. So my big reason why I do it is I want to make sure that I'm adding every possibility of layering layering that I can uh, to a building. So I'm using it for weathering purposes. And I will using it for realism, all right? So after, if we're building a, a structure that's is dilapidated, that's not going to have a lot of paint, you don't want fresh wood showing like this. You're going to want to have wood that looks like this if you want to, uh, you know, model that in that way. So you could, when you do stain the walls, though, you could do both sides if you wish. It's not necessary. But... I've seen some modelers do it that way where they actually submerge this whole piece without bracing it right into the uh, stain and they pull it out, then they brace it afterwards, which is fine if that works for you. Now, the only time you would paint the back of this is if you don't, if you're going to be putting some type of lighting in it. Now, if you're going to be putting like one or two bulbs that so the whole building lights up, then I would recommend that you paint the inside of your uh, walls black. And you can use regular craft paint if you want. Well, it, that will work. But if you're just doing one window or you want one window to have a light behind it, what you do is you just build a little light box. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into too much detail with that, but basically you're just isolating this little area where you're going to light up. All right. So, But this building is not going to be lit up, so we don't need to paint this. But what we do need to do is stain it, all right? But there, I've seen some modelers that don't stain it, and they paint it as is. That's their style. That's their techniques. And that's if it works for them, that's great. But I, what I like to do is I love to stain the wood, all right? It just adds that one, that one extra step of uh, realism to your model. So let me get the uh, stain set up, and then uh, we're going to start staining these walls. We'll be right back. All right, so before we begin to stain, one thing you have to be aware of, when you're working with these, these bottles of uh, either alcohol, India ink, or even these smaller bottles of Hunter Line, when you unscrew the lid, unscrew the top, and you're working with this stain, be aware of where the bottle is. You do not want one of these dumping over on your workbench or onto a project, and that'll be a bad day. So just be aware of that. So when we stain with something like this i've seen some modelers take the whole bundle of wood and just dump it right in a bottle and then flip and then flip over to the other side that's fine if you can do that but i only have a little bit of stain left so we're just going to do it by hand now when you put it on you don't want to soak the part you just want to stain the actual part and i'll show you A little stain goes a long way. Flip the brush over. Now you can use any color you want. You don't have to use driftwood. Driftwood is just my personal choice. Hunter Line has a great selection of colors that you can choose from. And I'm, I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out. Now, I know that Best Trains also has a great selection of stains. I'm getting ready to order a bottle soon, so I'll, I'll do a video on that once, I, once it comes in. But I'll put a link 
to their website as well because they do sell it and I've heard some really great things about it. So that part is done. So now don't forget, put the top on your ink or your wash. And then what I do, if I think it's a little too wet, which isn't too bad, you just take a paper towel and just blot it. And it'll take any excess away. And be careful when you blot, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, and especially around the, the openings and stuff. Remember I said the, once before about how fragile those areas can be. And it just takes off just a little bit. So that piece is done. Now it's starting to warp just a touch. So what I'm gonna do is just flip it over. Move this down. I'll put a couple weights on it. That's it. Now, this hunter line stuff dries pretty quick. But and the reason why I mentioned 91% alcohol when you if you're gonna be making your own. It, it just evaporates that much faster, all right? So there's only 9% uh, water in there. So it will definitely dry faster. So let's do a smaller piece. And then we'll also do these pieces. These pieces are going to be going on the top of the longer walls. I'm going to add a section. So it's always good to have a nice little selection of extra strip wood on hand so if you're doing scratch building or a special project uh, you have it in stock and it's really you know it's really not that expensive if you buy it in bulk and if you're going to be doing a lot of projects I highly recommend it but one of the things one of the videos um, I'll do is I'll show you how to build one of those tools that holds all your strip wood So those pieces are done. So we'll just move those up here for now. And then we'll do this. And then after this uh, wall, I'm going to pause the video. I'll finish the, uh, the rest. And then we'll come back and we'll wrap up this segment. This is probably going to be the quickest uh, part of, this, of the series. Uh, because it's, it's really it's not that hard to do uh, staining. But we need to know the precautions and how to do it. So again, we'll blot this. All right, so we'll be back in a little bit. All right, everybody, we're back. So all the walls and parts have been stained. The wall sections are currently being weighted down and I have my trim pieces are sitting on the towel. So this is the part of the build that I would suggest start working on your windows next because you want to make sure that you're not rushing this step. You want to make sure that the stain is good and dry. So as a practice, let the stain sit overnight. Let your walls stay on the weights overnight and then come back to it the next day and you can start your painting process. But what you don't want to do is rush through it. So I'm sure that if I come back in a couple hours, I sure I'm, I'll be able to paint these walls. But when you're first starting out, make sure that you give ample time for the uh, for the stain to dry. Alrighty. So I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, segment of the video series on building craftsman kits. There will be more videos coming. Um, the way it's been working out, I was able to get one video a week. So hopefully I can keep that up. And um, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe. And this is Ron at New Haven Rails signing off. And I hope you enjoyed this installment of How to Build a Craftsman Kit. Have a good night, everybody.